okay um welcome to the bhakti yoga portal um hello hari krishna whatever you fancy based on where you are which tradition you belong to um the kerala story uh, very controversial i think now it's reached to millions and millions of people um it's become very controversial um so i just thought we might have to do our part it's very important to do our part and add even a little you know one bucket in the water but it's a very important to do something so after all the hype and the controversies finally i thought oh but okay how about go and check the movie out so yeah i watched the movie and um i just been listening to a lot of um comments from various parties uh, both parties and all parties so i just thought i'll give some perspective to it from a pre philosophy a pre philosophical perspective what pre philosophical perspective means is that before even jumping into conclusions of either defense or offense or conformity um we we actually sometimes miss the the glaring fact staring at us and that's called pre philosophy pre philosophical means even before you enter into a philosophical discussion there's something glaring at us that we completely miss okay so what about this kerala story i think there's a character her name is asifa and um she does her own criticisms or evaluations and assessments and the whole subcontinent is going completely berserk trying to defend and trying to find solutions and um, and which is good and i i really welcome all that but i just wanted to give my perspective a little pre philosophical perspective number 1 if you think about this character carefully um this particular character who is been making these allegations across all the traditions all the religions all the faiths she has an agenda she has an agenda of coerciveness she has an agenda of trapping she has an agenda of um coercion yeah so when someone has an agenda of coercion now my question is is that criticism actually valid when she is criticizing other faiths or other religions is that criticism actually valid because it's valid when it's sincere but if someone has an agenda a coercive motto is that criticism valid so that's the first step to think so in in that sense that criticism actually not valid let's go to the next point of the next pre philosophical truth what she's actually doing she i think she was slandering a whole heap of variety of um angels or demigods or subcontinental fates and she even was slandering jesus the son of god but interestingly what i think this character doesn't realize and it looks like it's a prevailing phenomena around um these kind of uh people around the subcontinent is that she's actually conflicting herself because think about it her own scriptures and her own prophet approved certain figures that she is criticizing for example jesus so if she is actually criticizing and if she is actually evaluating and assessing and forming incorrect conclusions against her own scriptures against her own prophet is that criticism valid in a genuinely academic philosophical sense is that criticism valid so we we need to think about these things okay and number 3 again coming back to the pre philosophical before jumping into the defense or before jumping into conformities or you know can we actually take it as a wake up call because she's actually giving us all a wake up call both to the both parties so for example it's a wake up call for us because we haven't found the time to educate our children we haven't found the time to educate our societies our communities 
do we find time at least 30 minutes a day to sit with our children our friends our family our dear people to read some philosophical perspectives and theological perspectives in our life can we even name one living philosopher or theology we can't most of us at least most of us so how about taking this as a wake up call how about taking this as an assessment of ourselves how about taking this as a, a good caution to dig a little deep diver dig a little deep dive a little deep into our lives and take it as a wake up call if we see from these three perspective one is the criticism valid because one because there was an agenda there was a motive and there is a clear um trapping perspective when someone has a motive do you take those criticism seriously right that's number one number two she's conflicting her own scriptures she's conflicting her own prophet by criticizing some messengers or some faiths which even her prophet has approved three can we take it as a wake up call if we see from this perspective i think maybe we can start lowering our defenses maybe we can start um i know i don't know backing off a little bit and think about the situation because the whole subcontinent is going berserk on this so i thought it's very important to think from a completely different angle rather than just you know boiling our emotions and getting caught up in the whole whirlpool of um sentiments and emotions across the whole across the whole subcontinent and it's now wider and more expansive so i think it was um important so finally getting into the actual allegations or actual criticisms or maybe you can call evaluations and assessments about i think she was slandering lord shiva she was slandering lord rama lord krishna and she was slandering lord jesus um as some of you have may have i've gone through the whole uh, judaistic scriptures all the way from the first prophet to the last prophet and i've gone through the uh, quite a significant part of uh, vedantic studies from the eastern perspective and there are occasion there are several occasions when you are going through vigorous studies of comparative religious studies there are several occasions that you will come across controversial or maybe conflicting narratives and stories in any scriptures so what did i do when i came into a conflicting or controversial story i thought wait a minute should i consider the geopolitical situations around that era should i consider the social perspective should i consider the geographical perspectives so when you think about the political situations when you think about the social geographical perspectives then sometimes whatever seems controversial in any scripture take it old testament take it vedanta take it gita or take it the holy book quran or any text or the hadiths when you when you come across a conflicting or a controversial situation when you consider it from a hermeneutical perspective from an exegesis from an hermeneutical so it's principle of interpretations so when you come from that perspective then we will be able to shed more light from an helicopter view or what they call a eagle eye perspective so when you see from that perspective rather than seeing controversies what you see is syncretism syncretism means where when people from two different traditions or faiths meet they immediately talk about what's common and not dwell on the differences so because the point is to learn from each other and grow so this is syncretism so when you think from a syncretistic perspective what happens is we have more time to learn than looking at others and immediately finding differences and faults and slander so that's how the hermeneutics or the exegesis work so obviously this lady was going on slandering other religions but if when we look from this perspective it becomes a little bit easier 
so when we find conflicting stories you don't immediately jump to the you know judgments and conclusions you you look from it from a higher transcendental perspective that's how that's how you deal with the world that's how you deal with knowledge that's how you deal with hermeneutics that's how you deal with exegesis so that's the that's the point i thought it's very important rather than quickly jumping into attacks or defenses or confirmations or so looking at it from a from a much more higher transcendental perspective it's very important and the final point i wanted to cover is most of the people i think are struggling to understand or that if if those statistics provided in that movie the the kerala story okay the movie is the kerala story the kerala story okay um um the reason i repeated it for people who are not from india so that's the reason i repeated that three times so some of the people are worrying about if the stats are correct but there is a youtube from an academy called ashra vidya samajam who have been from nearly 3 decades involved in repatriating all the lost people all the trapped people or the coerced people back to their families that's what they've been doing 24/7 for the last 3 decades nearly and they have confirmed the stats and actually said that this if anything the stats have been downplayed and they receive approximately 250 phone calls around the world each day so just quickly summarizing pre philosophically we need to think number 1 are those criticisms are those criticisms valid because they have an agenda and are coercive number 2 she's actually conflicting her own scriptures and her own prophet number 3 is that a wake up call for us do we need to dig a little deeper into our lives do we need to educate ourselves more and um, finally um when we come across other peoples or other faiths or other traditions can we look at it from a more harmonic perspective and look at it from a more synchronistic perspective what are common what can we learn and grow and finally the stats so the ashram the, the academy is called the ashra vidya samajam they have a whole youtube for about 55 minutes so please check that out and please think about this please ponder on the subjects um i hope this will add one more bucket into the ocean of uh solutions and i'm really hoping with or um, i really i'm really hoping that it helps my family my friends my circles to find a new perspective to look at it the whole kerala story to look at it from a from a new perspective new vision and learn so if you like the video please like it So if you like the video please like it <laughs> and uh, share with your friends and family okay thank you very much uh, we'll meet again and next time it will be my daughter who does these videos um this time i just took the prerogative because it was a sensitive subject so thank you very much and um bye see you next time